Order 66 from a certain point of view, a couple of Rebels connections, and more. This is my review for The Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 1, Aftermath. A. B. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another review, and in this case it's going to be Star Wars, the, well not really the Clone Wars even though the show introed with that, but Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 1, Aftermath. So I had a chance to watch it um, yesterday as of May 4th, so um, if you have not seen the um, episode as of yet, then this one will definitely have some spoilers and um, information directly tied to the episode so if you haven't seen it yet you, you will you and you're listening to this you will be spoiled so with that being said let's jump right into it so overall it was a very good ex- uh, episode uh, longer than i would have expected than the usual maybe 30 to 40 minutes it clocked in about an hour and 18 minutes so definitely a few different episodes but all generally covering one story arc and that is the Bad Dash learning about Order 66, living through it. Um, and in this opening scene, we do get the first Star Wars Rebels connection in that we learn the fate of how Caleb Dune, um, aka the guy from Star Wars Rebels, the main Jedi guy, survived and um, disappeared and escaped from the clones. So. Um, essentially here we learn that he's the pad or we see that he's the Padawan of Deepa Bilaba and who ends up protecting him sort of but whole tries holding off the um, clone troopers who are who turned on her um, which didn't last very long but um, she tried her best and she ultimately falls but it gives him time to escape um, clone force 99 aka the bad batch um, tries to go after him but uh, he ends up getting away because he doesn't know why the clone troopers are acting the way they are and he doesn't know that the that, um, the Bad Batch doesn't actually follow those same orders so they're while they're not necessarily the good guys he thinks they're the bad guys because he thinks all clone troopers are the same and they're following the same directives and he's not quite sure um, what is going on. So with that, we get into the continuation of the episode. The group is trying to figure out what's going on, why all the stormtroopers are acting differently. Uh, we get the continuation of that they're all acting funny and they're all following their programming. And a couple of things, times they do have um, between Tech and Wrecker, um, a nice conversation and jabbing about their programming and Wrecker saying that he's not programmed even though he kind of was even though it was a mistake so um, it's kind of a technicality um, but we learned that or they kind of don't know what Order 66 is and they're not quite sure that how, how it relates to the Jedi Uprising but they understand that something is wrong and um, they need to figure out what is going on and uh, figure out who to trust. Um, in all of this, we see that Tarkin ends up going to Camino, and um, he wants to do a prof- an efficiency and proficiency test of the clones to see if they're worth all the money that the Empire um, may be spending on them to see if it's actually worth to keep that program going or um, recruit um, cl- um, troopers directly and not use clones so they have a big population so why use clones when they could just train everybody themselves so um, we have that and then he ends up seeing um, um, the bad batch in a food fight and that and how they're unique in their own separate ways and that there may be potential there, but he's not quite sure, but he still wants to test them. So the Kaminoans use them as a test group for the proficiency. Um, in, initially with uh, fake uh, rounds, but eventually with real r- rounds, and the group comes together and successfully wins. So then it becomes a matter of loyalty because he hears about how they let um, Caleb Dune escape. So he wants to make sure that their loyalty is... 
um, to the Empire, to the Republic, and to the, or not necessarily to the Republic, because they are loyal to the Republic, but he wants to make sure that their loyalty is going to be to the Empire and that they're not going to turn on them and that, and essentially the test of loyalty. Um, so he sends them to Andron, where we get our second Rebels connection in the form of Saw Gerrera. So Tarkin just tells the, group, the Bad Batch that they need to take out, um, a group of hostiles but doesn't tell them that there are humans or basically non-enemy combatants um to which they are the main leader of the bad batch um doesn't take well to that and he sees that they're that the, basically via saw we he learns that um when the government changes priorities change so just because the Republic would not necessarily have gone after them, the Empire, in their interest, would go after them. So um, they essentially failed their mission and the episode finishes up there. So essentially we'll see, or I can't wait to see what how they present this, how the conflict happens between um, the Bad Batch and Tarkin, what hap how they make that transition into the cl from clones into another group or if they use the sniper to um create a band um a training program or use experiences of the sniper to create a training program for the imperial army and navy um but all in all a very good start to the season um if you're a star wars fan then this is definitely a good progression to uh, what we saw with the Bad Batch back in Star Wars. I want to say Rebels, maybe Clone Wars. I, forget, I think uh, well, I wanted to lean towards Clone Wars. I actually don't remember off the top of my head and didn't make a note of where we saw them last. But essentially, um, a good start to the show and a good episode to have seen on May 4th. So um, I definitely recommend watching the show. It looks like it's going to be a weekly show with a looks like maybe 10 to 15 episodes um i think i saw around 12 or 13 on imdb so um we'll see how they progress through the empire if they end up joining the rebels or the groups ends up splitting ways or what happens with the group over the course of the run of the empire especially since the show started right at the time of order 66 um, right when um general kenobi ends up killing grievous on utapau and all of that so there is that and as far as the animation goes it was very well done i think they might or it looks like they definitely um improved the animations and graphics from the clone war season seven and definitely better than rebels in my opinion i did like the animations in clone war more than rebels not to say that rebels was bad but um just something that i noted this time around that they improved the facial structures and shadows and movements and all of that even emperor palpatine looked not necessarily realistic but i like that they improved that animation a lot so if you compare him to palpatine in clone war season one you can definitely see all the improvements in te technology upgrades and general attention to detail that they apply to the show so that is all there is for this particular review so at the moment i'm planning on doing a weekly recap review of the show to see how it holds up and how they progress with the storyline so if i was to grade this episode i'd give it probably about an a minus right around a 90 percent overall it was good i didn't see anything that i didn't like in the episode um even omega i thought would be annoying or an annoying addition to the show but i actually liked her character as well and her interactions with the Bad Batch, so and the Kaminoans, and all of that. So, um, she, I, I didn't really find any low point that I didn't like in that ep in the episode. So I'm kind of holding judgment to see how they progress the story over this season to see how they introduce the various characters, how they progress the storylines. But because it's Clone Wars, I know it's going to be good. But I can't wait to see how they um, how they progress the storylines over the season. So that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, 
or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can help support the show and comment on the post there for, with your feedback and comments and all that by visiting patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course, the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and if you visit the website, you can now check out a new gallery of um, pictures that I've taken um, since the start of COVID-19 and one that I'm going to I'm planning on regularly updating as pictures are taken so you can check out the power of mobile photography. So that is all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.